Neko ni mote suma. Empero rin kaino las pekas. Lakin tekwat len. Titlatakatl. This is Montezuma from the video game Civilization V, probably one of my favorite installment of the series. Now, why are we talking about Montezuma? Well, no particular reason. Let's talk about Def Cults. Friggin' Def Cults! Finally! I'm gonna sacrifice so many Psionic Pops, and the Astronomicon is gonna shine so bright! So? Sacrificing your own pops to get bonuses? Sounds like something that has been suggested for many, many, many weeks. But still, it looks like it's finally being added to the next update for Stellaris. And it's very exciting. They come in two different flavors. They are a Civic. And they have, you know, the normal variety and the corporate variety because clearly corporate def cults is not an, an, an a sinister analogy to um capitalism as a whole still you know you can sacrifice pops ritually sacrifice pops and that's pretty exciting and as you sacrifice pops at least once you have the option you get edicts that you can unlock now those edicts become you know they're the mechanism behind the actual sacrificial side of things which i personally think is pretty exciting is it a new mechanism technically yes is it a edict style system Yes, and I like this sort of thing, you know, being able to iterate on systems and not having to spend energy or influence on edicts. Something new. In this case, Pops, which is pretty cool. It's something that we're, it's been happening as well for uh, Ark of Ascension, which is something that uh, the guys have been working on. It's pretty exciting. Anyway, in order to start a death cult, you first of all need to be spiritualist. As you do. Our fanatic spiritualist, which I think is relatively straightforward. Spiritualists have are, are pretty underwhelming currently. Uh, they have got their spiritualist ethic attraction and stuff like that, and that's all perfectly fine and all. But overall, compared to, say, materialists, which is their polar opposite, at least on the ethics spectrum, or the wheel, um, they're a little bit underdeveloped, especially considering if you go materialist, you cannot go um, for the joys of spiritualists, and then you can't have robot upkeep bonuses or tech bonuses, and tech is awesome. Also, this sort of thing opens up all sorts of doors to modding, which is pretty exciting. Now, what can you not have if you're going to go for death cults? Well, first of all, you can't be a fanatic purifier. I think that's a big, big thing right there. Can't be a fanatic purifier of the religious variety, which is relatively straightforward. You can't be inwards perfect, so you can't have inwards perfection or anything along those lines, so you won't get those insane unity bonuses that are attached to that. And in this picture right here, they're talking about Ancient Preservers, which is a civic. Now, Ancient Preservers, just to put things into perspective, are only part of the game right now in terms of a very specific enclave that you can get through uh, Leviathans. Now, that is the uh, research enclave, basically. They are the ancient preservers. And on top of that, there is a redacted one. The way the formatting is done here, it looks like it could be an origin, which is pretty cool. Now, what do you get out of this? Well, first of all, it replaces every single temple building that a spiritualist can have. So basically, if you have your standard uh, spiritualist empire, you get your uh, normal boring temple, or your normal boring hollow temple, or your normal boring sacred nexus. Those three are being replaced by the wonders there we go, of the Sacrificial Temple. Now, what does the Sacrificial Temple actually do, and what kind of pup jobs are there available there? Oh yes, it is jobs that uh, the temple provides. First of all, a uh, plus five spiritualist ethic attraction is pretty nice, especially if you want to keep your empire nice and unified locally. You know, you want to have everybody aligned properly and make sure that everybody believes in the corporate god, especially if you're doing the mega corp run. And yeah, that is the flat bonus that you're going to get from your sacrificial temple. But that's not where the joys lie. The joys lie in the jobs. If you build yourself a sacrificial temple, and I wouldn't be surprised that you can build as many of them as you like, 
to the point that you can have a ecclesiarchy world where uh, pups are being uh, sacrificed every five years en masse. Uh, they've got deaf priests because subtlety is definitely not Paradox's forte, as well as mortal initiatives. Now, the deaf priests, you can have one pop of them on your particular sacrificial temple and also one mortal initiative. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, they've got upkeep costs, sure. You know, consumer goods being uh, consumed by a priest, 0 0.5 per pop and 0 0.1 by a uh, initiative is pretty low, let's be honest here. Of course, if you're going to go for certain, uh, you know, species rights, then those numbers will go up. And of course, they also consume one unit of food, which is pretty standard. However, um, now I would like to point out that the images that I'm showing here are most likely boosted by traits as well as other modifiers that are being applied to the Empire. However, if we take this at phase value, the output of a priest is six unity a month. That's on par with a, a grand priest that you would get on the sacred nexus building that you normally would get, which is a leader, uh, which is a leader pop. Um, then you've got society research, which is three, and amenities, which is five, which is pretty straightforward. It's very similar to a standard priest, a standard boring priest. You know, a standard boring priest would only uh, generate three unity and would consume two consumer goods. So apparently, you know, deaf priests don't need all that much. You know, they don't need that TV, they don't need those hair dryers, they don't need those toasters. Uh, those are, of course, your um, consumer goods in this particular case. And, of course, then you've got your initiatives, which uh, generate a little bit of uh, society research on top of that, which I guess is nice. Now, what do these initiatives actually do? Well, sooner or later, every five years, again, uh, applying modifiers here, most likely final numbers are in final, you can sacrifice all your mortal initiatives. All of them. You literally sacrifice pops to get access from edicts, or two edicts even. And there's three of them at the moment, and I'm sure this is going to open up a world of amazing modding, let's put it that way. And uh, that basically means you can get the following edicts. The sacrifice of togetherness lasts for five years. Uh, you kill all your initiatives, and you get a up to, ah, uh, this is the important one, up to 35% boosts to unity. Now, the more initiatives you um, sacrifice, the higher the chance that you will get to this 35 bonus. 35% that is. If you don't reach that, it has a base of 10 and it goes up from there, most likely like 15 or intervals of 5. I wouldn't be surprised. Still, it does mean that you will need a massive amount of initiatives to. I can't pronounce this word for, for crap. Initiatives? Nikki, how do I pronounce this? Yeah, uh, this, this one. Uh, beep, 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 um, that one. Initi Initiative. Whoa, 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 what? Initiates? No, Initiates. That's the one. All right. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks, my wife. Um, and still, though, you know, you, you sacrifice all those pops to get those bonuses. And on top of that, you will um, get a flat pop growth bonus of 5%, which is pretty nice in order to, you know, balance out your, your population and uh, get everything rolling there. Then you have the Sacrifice Harmony, which works very similarly. Uh, you sacrifice them pops so that I won't pronounce. And you can get up to 50%, 50% pop happiness. That is bat, bat crap insane. I didn't use that other word because YouTube will shut that down pretty quickly. And it starts at a 10% base. So the more you sacrifice, the higher pop happiness you get. And then finally, there is the sacrifice bounty. And I've uh, written bounty on my spreadsheet for some reason because I'm illiterate. And uh, apparently you can get up to 30% income bonuses for minerals and energy in a base of 5%. And again, um, you can uh, get a pop growth speed of 5%. That applies to every single one of these. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean in the grand scheme of things? It means that, well, first of all, your pops need to be eligible to be a character that gets sacrificed and that has to do with the fact with their um their stature within the empire at large uh, they need to be the kind of person that can have a job and that is ready for it so slaves do not apply which is a bit of a shame but it does mean that serviles apply and it does mean that, that anybody that uh, is not a slave but has certain living standards do apply and that right there i like 
especially if there is the possibility of having specific style pops with specific modifiers applied to them, you can get higher bonuses right off the get-go. You want to have a psionic pop that gets sacrificed and all of a sudden you have more happiness. Who knows? Be a cool mod if it's not in there. Just giving you a heads up. But still, that does mean that barbaric despoilers all of a sudden become a lot more interesting. I currently think it's still a waste of a pop and I would really like to see barbaric despoilers being moved into the origin category because it would make more sense because... They're space pirates. They're, it's not a civic. It's not a choice. It's an origin. You don't just go sailing onto the high space seas and um, decide that, oh yeah, we're pirates now. No, no, no. That's a cultural decision. On top of that, nihilistic acquisition also has a little bit more viability if you're going to go into this general direction because that 5% pop growth speed, whilst nice, is not necessarily the best thing that you can get. So you're going to need to find your pops from a different location. Let's say uh, you're playing with a lot of primitives. It's time for the harvest to start. Ah, yeah, and then, of course, obviously, obviously, after that, you're going to need to give them jobs because clearly they're not uh, <clears throat> prisoners with jobs in that particular case. So you need to make sure that they're uh, all in a good spot, which is pretty important. Still, though, the Death Cult by itself uh, does have a lot of bonuses to unity, pop happiness, minerals. So minor guilds would be good here. Any sort of pop job that applies to unity would be nice. So that would be a really good bonus. And it really boosts spiritualists up into the heavens. I'm really excited about this Death Cults. Oh, corporate Death Cults. I want to see you in the boardroom, sir. Looks like Jeremy from Accounting has been selected to be the sacrifice for tonight. Oh, we will be so happy indeed. Yeah, corporate death cults, it's, it's amazing. Capitalism, it's... Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Anyway, that is Death Cults. It's a new Civic coming up in the near future. We don't know when it's coming out just yet. If it's an update, a packed pack, or a full-on blown expansion, we don't know just yet. But in the meantime, actually, we do know it's a species pack, isn't it? Well, that's what the thumbnail says anyway. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you're excited about Death Cults, make sure that you post in your comment down below. If you are... Um, one of my patrons. I want to thank you so much for making this possible yet again. We're going to go and wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take good care of yourselves. And as always, don't join a death cult. Just keep watching my videos. I'd be really sad otherwise.